So it's very expensive to tour a band, you know, so I tend to come back here and tour by myself. I don't even tour really anymore, I just come back and play some shows in Melbourne because I'm here and to see my folks and friends and stuff. But I always wanted to tour here, but so this is quite exciting for me. I started playing acoustically, uh, playing guitar and singing, and uh, a show developed from that. And people liked that, so they kept on booking that, and they go, oh, we want that. You know, and so I tour in that, in that capacity, and then... Um, uh, but I love playing in a band also, so I put a band together and then, and then people see the band and they go, oh, we like that. So I kind of go out for six weeks or eight weeks by myself, come home for a couple of weeks and then usually, you know, rehearse the band for a few days and then off we go again as, as the band. You know, so the demographic is interesting. It's kind of summed up, I think, by when I was in uh, Springfield, Illinois, I think it was. And uh, I was in a coffee shop and there was a guy who was about 40 years old, there was a guy who was about 20 years old. And I was standing there ordering a coffee, and the guy who was 20 looked at me and said, I love your music. And I said, oh, thanks very much, because Overkill is my favorite song. And the guy who was 40 kind of looked at him, and uh, he went, you know who that is? And he goes, yeah, he was on Scrubs. And the older guy goes, what Scrubs? He was a man at work. And the young guy goes, what's men at work? So it's, it's a wide variety of people. People come with all kinds of expect expectations. Most, I don't really know anybody that goes away unhappy, you know, uh, because people usually tell you if they're unhappy. Um, but uh, this is a, a different show for me because normally, as I say, normally when I come back to Melbourne, I just play acoustically, but you know, by myself. People have gotten used to that. So sometimes when they arrive and there's no tables and chairs to sit at, they go, oh, where are we gonna sit? But this is basic, and, and the last time I played the corner was fantastic. It was an incredible crowd, maybe a year ago or something. I was unprepared for it in a lot of ways because the, the crowd was just, it was really exciting for me. Uh, it's a different kind of show. I mean, I, I go on by myself for a little while. The band send me out to do 10 or 15 minutes by myself. And I uh, say hello to people and play a couple of songs acoustically. Then I bring the band on and we play for a long time. I think this is the this is the best band that I've ever had. It's uh, uh, I really I really mean that. It's uh, I have a great rhythm section of uh, guys from from uh, from Los Angeles that I met. Charlie Paxson has been playing with the drummer has been playing with me for for uh, two or three years I think, or maybe even longer. I'm not sure, but um, he plays with many people. He's a great songwriter himself, and and uh, he's. Um, you're, it's a funny thing with drummers. I mean, you start to play with a drummer, you just start playing. You know immediately if you, if it's going to work or not. And when I started playing with Charlie, I could relax. I just I thought, oh, this is this. I can float a little bit, you know. So he's he's beautiful. He's a great drummer. And uh, he and Kave, the Kave Rastaga, the bass player, came recommended by Charlie, and he's a gem also. So I have they're they're great people. And um, Simon Hosford, I I've been mean, a guitar player. He's from Melbourne. I've been working with him for years. Uh, I first uh, 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 took him to Brazil with uh, an incarnation of Men at Work in 19, uh, 1996 when he was uh, maybe 22 years old and I just worked with him over the years and um, I found myself uh, just, I didn't have a guitarist and I just was in Melbourne and he said, oh look, I'd love to do it if you, if you want. So I took him, came over to the States and we toured over there for a while and, uh, and then um, and I was coming down here and I thought, well, who do you think for for, for keyboards and he suggested Dorian West who's also from Melbourne and I worked with Dorian as well he played bass in an incarnation of men at work as well so it's an element of uh, there's an element of family about it and of course Cecilia my wife sings with me and, um, and she's been singing with me for years I'm her hobby band she has her own band in Los Angeles called Cecilia Noel and the Wild Clams because really I used to play guitar and sing that was really what I first did I, I wasn't really originally in bands I was kind of when I was 14 I would go out and play little acoustic shows so that's really my natural game when the band broke up and then it was all over and, 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 I, and I started to go out and play by myself, I started to kind of tell people in a kind of a conspiratorial way, oh, tell you what happened to me, this is funny, this is interesting. Oh, once, you know, and people, oh, you know, so it, was, it wasn't kind of demystifying anything, it was just because what happened to me was kind of had the element of phenomenon about it because we were huge and then all gone. So then you, you're left with just, Hey, I'll tell you what happened to me. People, oh, is that right? So then, it, then I got a few laughs, and then I thought, oh, that's that's interesting. And then it developed from there. Then it became more conscious, and I developed a show which was called Man at Work, and it was on in different places. And now I kind of draw from that, but I'm always trying to keep it updated and keep it relatively, you know, relatively uh, fresh. I, I I just play what I want. I, I basically do that. I play what I want. I play what the band wants. I mean, I. 
there are certain songs you can't ignore and um, I treat them with respect, you know. Uh, this, the Men at Work songs that were hits are big songs, they'll always be big songs. They're powerful songs because they were big hits and so some people choose not to play them, you know, if they want to, you know, divorce themselves from the past or something, but I love the past and there was a short period of time in the, in the, in the late 80s where I kind of felt a bit strange about the about those songs because I was too emotionally attached to the old band but after that went away the, the songs popped up and said well we're still here and the, the songs are really what people are more inter are interested in more than they don't really care who's playing them as long as they hear the songs she basically just she does what she likes and she sings great and she sings well and again it's it's a way of us to be able to it's also, also a way of us being able to travel together I used to like to drink mm, I don't drink anymore I play guitars and collect them. I don't collect them, I, I buy them and play them. I have beautiful Maiden guitars and I have uh, really nice guitars from different makers. Uh, a guy called Rick Turner who makes these Renaissance guitars that I use a lot. And um, I have a guitar for every occasion. Deciding which guitars to take on a tour is a complicated business. It takes quite a while and uh, uh, usually a day or two of uh, anguish, deep anguish, about which ones to leave behind. Because they all want to come, pick me. It's a sickness, really. It is. I'm quite aware of it. And uh, there's no cure. But they're beautiful things. Beautiful. I've been trying to document the live show for a while. People keep asking me for a DVD, and I haven't got one, and I don't have one that I like. And I don't have one at all. Whether and. People say, oh, we really, want the, we really want a DVD with stories. We really want to you know, take that home and, and so forth. So it's really an attempt to get with the program and kind of you know, get it together and uh, uh, record, you know, yeah, as you say, record a, an event. And I just thought, oh, I might as well try it. And, you know, and I met Marty and, and the corner seemed like the obvious place because the last time in the history, I thought, oh, well, let's do it at the corner. We'll, we'll see what happens. You know, you can never really tell what it's going to be like, but I've got a good feeling about it.